What's up everyone, welcome back to Brad's Bioactive Builds, where I do step-by-step, -step, custom built, animal enclosures. In today's video, I'll be going over how I did this 6.5 foot high, 2 foot wide, 2 feet deep, hybrid chameleon enclosure. It will include the drainage system, hardscape, plants I used, screen dome top, fence with fans, how I made the top branches and more. I'll link everything in the description below. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It helps the channel grow. To kick this build off, I needed one 4x8 piece of PVC board. I used a jigsaw to cut out my measurements. Here's a quick layout of the measurements that I used. Putting my pieces together, starting with the back wall. A 90 degree clamp goes a long way. Measured over a quarter inch and then down every six inches. Drilled a pilot hole and then buttoned it down with a screw. Double checked to make sure everything was running square and then repeated the same process for the right side. Showing a quick example on how all the half inch PVC pieces were put together on the back wall. Flipped the enclosure over so I can start working on the bottom, made my measurements, and screwed the bottom into place. From there, measured down about a half inch so I can go ahead and put a one inch lip around the whole top of the enclosure. That way it'll line up with my background one inch XPS foam board. Installed the top front brace. Then pulled my measurement so I can complete the lip around the whole top of the enclosure. Got my 1 inch XPS insulation board ready to be cut. Then just use a serrated steak knife to the back of the XPS board so silicone would bond to it better. Added a little bit of detail where the foam board will meet the front of the enclosure and wiped it down. Added silicone to the seams, being careful not to go below where the XPS board will reach. Added a generous amount of silicone to the back of the XPS board, then just installed it, butting it to the top one inch lip. Then added some weight and let it cure overnight. Used a wire brush to start scratching up the surface before adding all the detail. For this build, there was really no rhyme or reason for how I carved it, I just kind of went at it. Used a heat gun to tighten everything up so dry lock would bond to it better. Laid down some spray foam to all the seams. Sprayed it down with some water to help it cure a little bit quicker. Once cured, went ahead and pulled it off, leaving the gap filled. Taped everything off that I didn't want dry lock to get on. Mix quick crate with dry lock so I can see my different tones as I apply different coats. Then just started painting on four different coats. I get asked a lot of times on how many coats I should apply. It really depends on what kind of animals going in and the wear and tear that they're going to put on the background. This build is for a chameleon and really won't be used in the background. Therefore, I'm only using four coats. For detail, I used dry lock with a couple different tones of quick crete and then just started dry brushing it on. I really wish the camera would have brought the detail out a little bit better, but this process really brings the background to life. Went ahead and tacked in some branches and pot holders with hot glue to hold them into place. Gave my man Botticelli a test run just to make sure everything was to his liking. Started packing the plant holders with paper. Spray foamed everything in. Once cured, pulled the paper and started carving everything down, removing the whole outside coating. And did the same thing for around the branches. Yeah. 
added my different coats of dry lock to the spray foam. And then just tied it into the rest of the background, making it look like all one piece. Hold the tape to get a nice clean line. Made my measurements to attach the front and bottom board. Then went ahead and screwed it into place. Cleaned off the seams with some rubbing alcohol. Added a bead of Lexel adhesive. It bonds really well to PVC, super strong, animal safe, and paintable. Once cured, I added a couple of coats of dry lock for extra waterproofing. Picked up some window screen frame and started building the front door by first attaching the 90 degree elbow. With the elbow at the bottom of the frame, I marked my measurement, put that elbow to the line and marked a new line where I wanted to make my cut. Just repeated this process until I had a front door. And repeated the same process five more times to complete the top screen dome. And cut my vertical pieces to 18 inches. Taped up everything together to make sure everything was lined up properly and squared off. Here's a quick 360 degree rotation around the enclosure so you can see how everything comes together. If you haven't noticed, I have a full room to fill with future builds. So go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming content. Or check out some of my past build videos. Spray painted the frames black to match the rest of the enclosure when all said and done. I'm using aluminum screen. It helps to apply a quick groove through the channel before applying your spline. Once again, taped it all together and made my measurements. Drilled the pilot hole and screwed it all together, securing it into place. Now that I have a place to work, I can start building the tree on the inside of the screen dome. Hot glued the base into place, then spray foamed it in. Use a Dremel tool to help notch the pieces together a little bit better. Tacked it into place, spray foamed it in. This surprisingly has a very strong hold. I wanted this part of the spray foam to be as smooth as possible, so I started shaving down little by little with a fresh clean razor blade. Carving it down to the branches as much as possible to make it look like one cohesive piece. Checking the strength and it was secure. Applied some dry lock with a couple of tones of brown to have a camouflage into the branches. Once I finished that all up, I just went ahead and attached the screen to the top of the dome. I found it useful to set all my screws before buttoning it all down. Marked a hole where I wanted to place all my vents. Used a two and a half inch hole saw to drill through the enclosure. Spray foamed around the hole for water runoff, taped it off, and tied it all in. Laid down some primer and painted it black. Pre-drilled the vent and used mosquito netting. And pounded it into place. Then just drilled it home with quarter inch screws. With a new razor blade, went ahead and cut the mosquito netting. Added a bump stop for the front door. Taped everything tight so I can start adding the hinges and latches.
chopped down and drilled the legs of the rep debris stand so the enclosure wasn't 10 feet tall and then just reassembled. Cutting out some screen mesh to fit over my half inch bulkhead. Cleaned it off with rubbing alcohol and applied silicone. Then placed it over the half inch bulkhead. This will help keep unwanted debris out of my drainage system. Put the enclosure on the stand where I wanted my bulkhead to go and then removed the enclosure and drilled a hole through the wood. Then drilled a hole for the bulkhead. Cleaned off everything real good, applied some silicone, and installed my bulkhead. Added a ball shutoff valve for my drainage layer if it gets full of water. Rinsed all the dust off my Leica that I'll be using for my false bottom and dumped it all into the enclosure. This will provide a place for water to go without waterlogging my substrate and it will also create beneficial bacteria down below. Added some weed barrier to separate my substrate from my false bottom. I'll be adding UVB for the reptile and Jungle Dawn for the plants. Hydrated the ABG mix before placing it into the enclosure. Quarantined and then knocked off all the old substrate from the plants, cleaning them down to the bare root. And rinsed off all the leaves in attempts to get rid of any hitchhikers. Planted some ficus trees and money trees, along with some other various plants. In a few months or so, this thing is really going to take off, look super dope. It will be heavily planted, providing a lot of refuge and enrichment for the chameleon. Just a side note, I do wait about three to four weeks before putting any animals into the vivarium to give the plants a chance to root. After everything was planted, I gave it a good spray down to rehydrate the plants. I took a tattoo needle from my tattooing days, poked a hole in the bottom of the plant holder so they can drain when needed. Placing some cork bark, nut pods, seed pods, and different types of botanicals. Along with different types of leaf litter. Seeded my cleanup crew with powder orange isopods. For any small gaps that I saw, I simply just taped it up and sealed it off. For the nighttime fogger, I simply just got some half inch PVC pipe, connected the hose, applied a hose clamp, and screwed it down. From there, put it on top of the enclosure, and mounted it to the back. Filled up the fogger with some water and connected the hose using 40 millimeter fans. It has a low, medium, and high setting. To install them, I simply remove the top screw to my vent, put it through the hole in the fan, and put it back into place. Flipped on the basking light with the dimmer switch and tested out the nighttime fogger. And this is my version of a chameleon hybrid enclosure, the Skyscraper. This was a super fun build to do, and I'm totally happy how it came out. But let me know what you think of it down in the comments below, or if you have any questions on the build process, feel free to ask. In the meantime, let's watch Botticelli do his thing.
like and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see me build next. Thank you for watching.